All right, you guys. Well, um, in this video, we're just going to set up the variables. I'm sorry if this isn't uh, readable. It's kind of the irony is I put so many comments in here to be descriptive and yet it can it can look overwhelming. And so I apologize if there's too many comments. I just want anybody loading the project to be super clear about what anything does. All right, so let's look at the rubric really quick. So here we're going to set up the variables speed, lives and score. So first things first, let's just create three variables. So make a variable, we'll call it ball speed to be really clear. We'll call this score. And then we'll create another one that is lives or you could call it maybe like lives remaining or whatever balls remaining. I'll call it lives remaining. <clears throat> so let's set up the first one. Let's set up score. Okay. So when our game starts, we need to set all the variables. Okay. So I'm going to start by setting the score to zero. And then when do I want the score to increase? Well, when I go over here and it says it increases when the ball touches the player paddle. Now, if you want to do it a little different where when it touches the computer or when it touches both, but just following the inst instructions, literally, I would say, where am I already detecting the player paddle and ball hitting? It's right here. And the nice thing about this is it's a wait until. So it's only going to hit the player paddle once and then it's going to wait until it's not hitting the player paddle anymore. So I know that it's not going to hit once and count like three scores or 10 scores. It's going to hit once, count one score and then leave. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to increase the score. I don't know. Let's say we're increasing the score by uh, tens. So every time we hit, or let's even go 100. So every time we hit the paddle, so here we go, it starts at zero, boom, 100 points. Oh, I feel good. 200 points. Oh, yeah. Let's check it out. 300. Okay. So score is working. Done. Okay. If I start the flag again, oh, yeah, it's at three, or it's at zero again. All right. So next, let's set up lives remaining. So at the beginning, we set it to a starting thing. So lives remaining, I'm going to say three. And then somewhere we need to say we lost a life. Okay. So where is that going to happen? It doesn't really matter. Since there's no wait time, um, I'm going to put it in this loop here because down here, the wait times mean some things could um, not be detected. Now, it wouldn't matter here. We could be very specific because as soon as it's not touching, this would start checking again. But still, I'm going to go uh, up here and I'm going to say if, okay? So when would we lose, okay? Well, let's think about this. I'm going to lose if I, the player on the right side of the screen, miss the ball. So if the ball goes by my paddle, so in other words, if the ball goes too far to the right, so that's X position. So here I'm just going to say, okay, I'm just going to duplicate this. This is pretty close. Okay, except I'm not using X position. Oh, maybe I could even relabel that. Can I relabel? Oh, yeah. So if the X position relabel ever gets bigger than a number. Okay, so bigger than what number? Well, 240 is the ed edge of the screen. But let's even say like 300 to give it a little extra time. Right? So it's not just the second it gets to the edge. It goes a little further. Okay, so if the X ever gets that far, then I could do everything in here. But I'm going to do like a quick little broadcast and wait. Now be careful because if, if, if you broadcast and wait and start a forever loop, this and wait will never finish. So I'm going to do broadcast and wait so I know everything happens before coming back here. I'm going to broadcast a new message saying um, lose a life, right? That's what happens. Okay. Now over here, I'll say when I receive this message, or actually I'm going to right click and clean up. So that ended up right here. So I'm going to say when I receive a message, um, lose a life, then all I want to do is what? Well, very first thing is I want to change the number of lives remaining by negative one. OK, so that's for sure happening. But then I need to restart the game. So you got a couple options for now. I'm just going to say, hey, I'm not going to reset everything right now. All I'm going to do is temporarily say go to zero, zero. But later I will change this to be a full reset the whole game up. OK, for now, I'm just going to say change lives by negative one. Go back to the center and later we'll do how you win and how you lose in the next video. OK, so here we go. 
If I miss, oh, lives at two. Oh, lives at one. Oh, I saved that one. 100 points. Um, yes, I saved that one. 200 points. Oh, no, I'm going to miss this one. Oh, I'm at zero lives. And I don't have any you lose right now. So if I miss again, it's just going to go to negative one lives. That's totally okay. Um, you can also, what I'll do in the next video is when it spawns, I'm going to temporarily set the uh, ball speed to zero. So when I miss it, it doesn't just keep going in the same direction. All right. So we've got lives remaining set up. We've got the score set up. Let's go back to variables. We just are missing ball speed. So the way we do ball speed is first, we give it a starting, right? So we're here where we're saying move five steps. That's our speed. So let's say the ball starts at a speed of five. Okay. And so now we just move by ball speed. So our program hasn't changed. Looks the exact same, works the exact same so far. But now we can change that ball speed. Now you might want to go up by one or 0.5 or every so many hits it goes up by a burst. However you want to do it. Okay, but, oh, and let's look at the instructions. So the instructions say this, um, the speed increases as the game goes on. So super open, however you want to do it. Since we're already increasing the score here, that's like you accomplished a hit. So you got some points and now the challenge increases. So let's also increase the speed. Again, the nice thing here is we're not having two different places detect the same thing. And we know it's only going to happen once when it hits the paddle. So sure, let's go ball speed by one. So now it starts at five. Oh, shoot, it's a little bit faster. Oh, shoot, it's seven now. Ah, it's eight. And it's just going to keep getting faster and faster. And now going for a high score, but it's getting really hard and stressful. And maybe I miss one. And oh, no, I didn't even reset anything. So when I miss, it stays super fast. How am I ever going to win? Ah, it's so crazy. And it, whoa, it is getting really hard. So ah, ah, and now I'm at like negative a million. Okay, so there we go. That's it for this video. So we set up the three variables that starting values. That's hugely important. Um, the score and the ball speed I used here where it hits the player paddle and waits until it's not hitting. That way we only have one place detecting it. And it's only for sure detecting it once. And then the other one was just when the X position got too big. So when it went out of the right side of the screen, we take off a life. Now, you also need to have it go back to the center. Otherwise, it'll never come back. But in the next video, we'll set up how you actually lose the entire game and restart the entire game. All right. As always, this uh, project is going to be in the description of the video. Enjoy.